What's up guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess and I have mom here today cooking with me again. I know a lot of you liked our bloopers in the <laughs> video from yesterday on the General Sow's chicken. Um, and I thought it was real, when we were first starting that filming, I thought it was just too funny not to put it in there, even though it made us look like it's a, it's a peek into our lives though, right? <laughs> I mean really, that's how we cope, we cope with laughter in this house. So anyways, if we have more bloopers, I'll be sure to leave them in <laughs> no. from this point forward since you guys enjoyed them so much. So anyways, today we're going to do one of our easy weekend dinners. Even if we, I've made this a more simple way during the week, but this is something I like to do on the weekends because fajitas smell good, they taste good, they're satisfying, you can make them a million different ways. But today we're going to keep it simple. We're going to have a mountain of peppers and onions with either <laughs> with either beef or steak. I got a flake steak and I have chicken. Um, and then we're make our own guacamole and we're also going to make our own pico. So it's going to be a, fall, a fun recipe. Now I'm going to skip lunch because it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Sliced turkey, you know, I think you can figure that out. And this, that allows for more time to cook here. So the video is not too long. So anyways, hope you understand. Links are going to be down below and let's change this camera angle around and get started on today's delicious keto fajitas. <laughs> All right. So this is the marinade we're going to use for our flank steak and our chicken and also the veggies. So I'm gonna reserve about a half cup of the marinade um, for the veggies. And then I'm gonna take the remaining portion and divide between my bag of flank steak and my bag of chicken. I have a total weight of two pounds um, combined. Um, I think the flank steak is about a pound and the chicken together of those two pieces is a pound. And I'm just going to roll it around in there and get all the air out and set it aside until we're ready to grill them up. All right, so another gadget alert. Is this called the slap chop? No. I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. It works really well. It's great when you want to make something all uniform sizes yeah. and it can, collects it down below. So you put your vegetable, you squeeze it through. Easy as that. So Johnson got me on that. My other daughter. She, next thing I know, I went home, you know, to New England. I'm like, I need that. And now I just got her one. So, so we're gonna. I'm gonna test it out for my first time. Yes. So, anyways, let's start with some tomatoes. Sure. To make our, our pico. So you would, what do you do? Big what I slices? Know is I just take, because I don't like where the seed. Um, and you can change out the goes. little, like how big, how how small do you want it? Bigger, like this one? I think the tomato should be bigger. Bigger one? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to put uh, the purple onion. Yep. And we'll use that with the smaller The size. red onion for the food, please. <laughs> the red onion, yeah. Oh my goodness. God, how dare I. No, we'll do, let's do the tomatoes first. Okay. Yeah, because that's bigger. All right, let's try. See if it works, we go side view, so. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go fast. All right, to go fast, I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> well, right. how cool is that, right? All right, do it. Nice. Is that cool or uh -huh. what? Just do works on your arm muscles I while know. you're making cooking. I know, I got Popeye arms now. So we have more. Mm -hmm. So you want uh, you want more tomato than that? I don't know. Uh, in the, this is the salsa or the pico? Pico. Okay, pico, that's enough. That's enough for it. Let's throw some purple onion in there. So I switch out this little guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put the smaller one in. And then I usually just do this. Of course, that's thicker than I want. I think I might want it a little thinner than that. Let's go like this. And just just load it all up because it's all going to happen when it's on there. Right. Okay? Don't be afraid. You can push <laughs> that thing down. I did. What else? Let's do that yeah. last one. Now let's look at the. Now you can take this off and see what you think for the variation. Is there enough variation between the pepper? You see, like I think that's good coverage for a pico. Okay. Don't you? Uh -huh. Now what else? You want your pico? You want some. Parsley? That's not parsley. I mean, I'm sorry, cilantro. What's wrong with you? Cilantro. Cilantro. Oh, you put that through here too. I put everything through it. Oh, wow. All right, run that through. So obviously if you don't have one of these, just use a knife. Just, yeah. <laughs> Get a cutting board, the old fashioned way. Yeah, keep it going because the more the stuff, let's put some fresh garlic on there. Oh, a little more garlic, I think. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. 
Mm -hmm. Let me stir that up. Now sometimes I like to add to the pico jicama, and I also like to add um, sometimes cucumber, just to give it a little bit of that. We're not doing that but today. We're not doing that today. <laughs> I think this is perfect the way it is, to be honest with you. All right. I think that's perfect. Let's put that, that in here. And I would like to add maybe a little lime juice to this. Oh, I used all my lime when I made it. I think we have one in there, the but I have lime juice in a can. Yeah, that's fine. Just a little lime makes that, brings that right up, brings all those flavors out. And of course, I always add. I like pepper, so you know what? That may not be traditional pico. This is how we do it. You know that song? This is how we do it. Careful, you're going to get me demonetized. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anybody that gets her in the trouble, it, of course it's me. <laughs> so this little tool helps pull any of those pieces isn't that, out. Isn't that awesome the mm -hmm. way that works? Yeah. I love cilantro. We might have a line back here. We do. We do? Yeah. Let me just cut this. I'm sipping on my keto coffee, of course. I like a hint of lime in that. And then if your tomatoes are out of season, because you want this, Pico wants to, it, it begs to be a little bit sweet uh, to complement like usually the acidic foods that go into the other um, dishes in the Mexican culture. So what I will do is I'll check taste on it. And if I think that the tomatoes are not ripe enough, I'll actually sprinkle in a little acanto uh, mm -hmm. sugar just to bring that, you want that up just a bit. So let's, let's taste that. Ooh, that's too much. Here, I get another one. <laughs> but you know what? This is perfect just the way it is. And isn't that pretty? That's very pretty. All right, pico done. Okay. And oh, you want to make our own Let's salsa? Let's make the salsa while we got the slap chop out. All right. Well, I have chicken and beef um, marinating. So the, mar the recipe for the marinade will be down below. What's next? So I need to put this back to the, uh, for the tomato. I would like the or? salsa all. I would like them all the same, so I would like them all in the smaller. Small one, all right. That's what we have in here. And actually, you want to put them in this. And these are ready to go. It's loud. I know, but it's just it's that last force <laughs> on it that does it. And these tomatoes, for being not the tomato growing season. Yeah, it's definitely not summer. <laughs> um, these tomatoes are fabulous. They really don't, uh, they're nice and sweet. There's a lot of, um, the flesh isn't like too squishy. It's pretty darn good. And in my salsa, of course I want. Yeah, that is amazing. Isn't that awesome how quick that, that is? is. <laughs> Now, when I do make my salsa, I kind of like, I do do the, the, the peppers, I mean, excuse me, the onions a little thinner. All right, Let's give those a go through. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. All right, do the garlic. We might want more garlic, but I, I have know. minced a fair bit okay, of it. Minced. Now we're going to do our, for our heat. It's a, you have to be careful with the jalapenos. You know, normally I have my, my very attractive Hollywood glasses on, but I don't have those in here right now. I didn't think. You gotta be really careful because sometimes a pepper will squirt up. So just when you're going through, the, especially the hot peppers, I don't mind it on my hand so much because I kind of have a tough hand now from cooking all this like this. So. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> How does that look? Let me see what the ratio is here. Let me get my spoon. Do we want any of that? Another clean spoon. Do we want any of that heat in the pico or keep the salsa? No, the I like the pico is like supposed to be your sweet complement. This is like, you, you know, for a different, a different level. It smells good. We might need a little more garlic. I think I'm going to use the rest of this minced garlic in there. I guess I should have done a bigger bowl. No, yeah, we like our... We <laughs> you like might our just mix salsa. it all in here. Yeah. Actually, we can put, mix it on the bigger one if you want. You want to do that? Sure. You can always transfer it. Oh, the spoon is right here beside it. 
And for those people that don't do cilantro, cilantro, uh, you call it what you want. I call it. <laughs> um, the green stuff. There is actually a genetic trait that some people have a gene variant that makes it taste like, like soap. soap. I do not. And know we don't. That we gene. absolutely <laughs> love it. So either cilantro is one of those things. Either you like it or you don't. So and we love it because we do not carry that particular gene <laughs> variant. So go ahead and um, if you want to switch out the uh, switch it out with parsley because then you still get that eye appealing green and um, there and parsley does impart a very nice flavor to it. So don't be don't be shy with the parsley if uh, cilantro is not your thing. And then this is a chunky salsa. If you do, your preference is a more. We could put that in my little blender. Yeah, a little like a saucy salsa. Then yeah, throw it through a blender, and then you won't have an issue with. Um, again, I throw in some lime. You need the acid. You do need that. It just makes every the party all happen. And I do want salt in here. Salt is fabulous. Top one's pepper. The big one in the bottom is salt. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, we have salt now. Are we getting low? We're getting low. I will, I will fill that up. <laughs> All right, stir that and taste it and see what you think. See if we're close or what. Another hungry one enters. <laughs> they can't, I'm not moving the camera. <laughs> That's Kyle that just entered, by the way. <laughs> we get another spoon. Hey, come over here. <clears throat> oh, Whoa. Ready? This man just finished the last. This man just finished the last of our hardwood floors in the bedroom area, and I've been oh. Go Kyle! So happy! <laughs> the project is officially done. <laughs> so good job. Now mix that up and give that a taste. That one teaspoon just changed everything. It might have. It might have. I'm, I'm all about that. <laughs> Pardon me, just throw this in the little processor. That, you can do that because if you don't like a real chunky one, and that's, I would say yes, after we get the taste to where we want it, go ahead and do that. Mmm. That's good. <laughs> that's yummy. Mm, is that, does mm, that hit mm, the spot? Mm hmm. That's good. As you add more stuff to it. A little more lime. But it's hard to, hard to judge this recipe if you keep adding you stuff. You just have to taste it. What, when there's a party in your mouth, <laughs> stop. <laughs> that's good. Mm hmm. Let me get the food processor. And I get one of these for Christmas. Yay! Go me! And I'm going to learn to use it now before I go <laughs> home. <laughs> That looks good. I'm taking my spoon, my test okay. spoon. You test it. Go ahead. I think it's perfect. Isn't that yummy? I wouldn't mess with it at all. All right, let me test. Let me take another taste. So I'm usually full by the time dinner's served. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Mm -mm -mm. And we can see the difference in consistency. We don't want it like pureed, it's just right. chopped and blended. Whoa, I lost my, careful, <laughs> I was throwing, <laughs> throwing sharp objects at me. There you go, isn't that beautiful? All right, so now we have our pico and we have our salsa. Next, we chop up the peppers and onions. <laughs> peppers and onions. I'm gonna have to bring this back and we'll be right back. All right, next we're going to make guacamole. Already got one done. Here's the second. You slice it and then if you just put the knife in and the pit comes out so easily. 
Now then the next thing, since it's going into guacamole, I usually start at the top and go around with a nice, uh, big, a good sturdy spoon. And I bring it right out there. <laughs> and do the other one. Meanwhile, we have four large green peppers and two medium-sized onions. And this is going to feed six of us. So you're going to want your own totals and your own weight based off of your own macros and how many people you're feeding. And I kind of pre-slice pre and dice because it makes it easier in the mashing phase. We like a chunky guacamole. I don't like it too creamy. I like my food to have various um, textures in my mouth. So there we go, it all goes into the bowl. We need a, a bigger bowl to mash that, I think. All right, so we got a new bowl here. We mash this all up. Okay, so if you're wondering how to tell if an avocado is ripe or not, using your two fingers, your thumb and your middle finger, squeeze top and bottom. If it's soft, nice and soft like a ripe peach would feel, it's ready to go. If it's firm, it's not ready to go. And I have failed at picking avocados by going this, this way. way yeah. I've gotten many that were either not ripe enough or too ripe mm -hmm. by going that way. So if you want a foolproof proof way, top and bottom. And if it squeezes nice and soft, it's ready to go. If it squeezes too easily, it's too ripe. <laughs> and you're gonna open up to a, not ripe, but brown avocado. Yeah, the so. little spots that you don't wanna eat. And <laughs> avocados are too expensive. Yeah, I mean, they here in Texas out. they're not, but when we go to New Hampshire. I've paid, paid $2 for an avocado up in New England. And you open them up and two out of three are brown. Or they're so hard, <laughs> it takes like a week on the, two weeks on the, on the on counter. The counter. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, let's make the guacamole. So we've transferred to a new pan, or a new bowl. <laughs> we've mashed it with a fork, so it's not super mashed. It's still a little chunky. And um, now we're just gonna season it up. Are we gonna put fresh purple onion in this? Um, or are we gonna do onion powder? I was powder? going to do onion powder and garlic powder. Okay. All right, make it the onion powder. It's the only thing I don't have here. Onion powder. Because um, I like the star of the show to be the texture to be the, the actual avocado pieces, not the pieces of, we already have the texture of the whole garlic and the uh, salsa and the pico. So then I just, just very little onion, but don't be afraid of the garlic. And season it to taste. Play right. around with it with a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Find what you like. Um, a lot of people of like salt. punches of flavor. A lot of people like subtle flavors. So, you know, just mess around with it in little increments. You can never add too much if you start little at a time. If you big glop at a time, you could ruin a whole batch. So just do a little bit at a time. And I added pepper because we are a pepper family. If you're not, this traditionally does not have pepper in it. We like <laughs> it. Little lime juice. Fresh lime juice. Alright, give that a flavor. A flavor test. A flavor test? A flavor test. <laughs> Two clean spoons. I've also been known, um, again, if your avocado is not fully ripe, it has like a, almost a tartness to it. You can sweeten that up with a little bit of, like it's, it's not ruined. I mean, you pay too much money for an avocado. You can add a little bit of mayonnaise or a little bit of sour cream to soften it or just sweeten it up a bit. Perfect. Perfect. I wouldn't do anything to it. Perfect. All mm -hmm. right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the stove top and cook up these peppers and onions. And I'm going to put the actual meat, <laughs> our, our flank steak and our chicken on the grill. And I'm going to cook them to your desired doneness. Um, and that is something that Kyle is going to, he's the master of the grill, so he's going to do that for us. Let me um, just put everything out and they can see how pretty everything is. So they will totally see prepped. As <laughs> soon as we come back, you'll see the next step. For nighttime grilling, we got this really cool light. Because um, as you can see, it's pretty dark out right now. <laughs> so it makes it pretty hard for grilling when um, you just have regular porch light. So check out the LED light. And there is the flank steak. So it's been marinating for about an hour. 
and the grill is about 500 degrees. And then we're going to do two pieces of chicken and we'll do a combination fajita platter. And the, the hot dogs are for the kids and dogs. <laughs> so don't judge. And there you have it. So we'll be back when it's time to dice them up. Meanwhile, we're going to cook up our peppers and onions. So I have two tablespoons of avocado oil. Um, and I'm just using peppers and onions. Um, you can change out whatever you want. I'm covering the veggies just to get them to cook a little quicker. Um, and then I'm once those come together, we're going to add the remaining part of that marinade. So the flank steak is ready. It's resting. Um, we like to rest it before we cook it. <laughs> Um, so now that the veggies are ready, we're going to put that remaining half cup. If you want to save the most carbs, skip that step and just leave it with salt and pepper. Um, but if you want a little, if you have a little bit more, um, room in your macros, go ahead and add that marinade. Um, so anyways, those are ready to go and we have started dicing up that flank steak. Um, and then the chicken kind of got away from us on the grill. So it's getting a little charred. <laughs> You'll see. But anyways, the peppers and onions are done. There's the pico, the salsa, the guacamole, and a little fresh cilantro. And the chicken has a little, is a little too done. <laughs> hey, it's, it happens. So anyways, um, a total weight of about six ounces of meat. I've got a scoop of pico, my peppers and onions, and my guacamole. It is very satisfying and perfect on its own. Oh, good. Everything's gone. Whoa. Whoa. The camera. Whoa. Oh, it went down again. Is it? <laughs> I'm gonna leave this in there. <laughs> Already, well, I hope you enjoyed it. It's crooked, it's, so let's it's move crooked. Our head. It's crooked, sorry. <laughs> I don't feel like changing the angle. Um, anyways. It's like Coley. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, the links are down below, and leave a comment if you liked this video. A nice comment. A nice comment. Mama Bear is done with the bad stuff. Be kind, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. I'm Jess. And I'm Mom. And you're watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.